Hi everyone, this is Pastor Dan from Calvary Chapel, Clayton, Washington. I wanted to hopefully give us another word of encouragement today during these difficult times we're in due to the stay-at-home orders most of us are having to deal with right now. I know this puts many of us under a great deal of stress and strain, not just because of having to spend most of our time at home, isolated from others, but because of the financial strain this puts on most everyone who is no longer able to go to work and earn their living. I'm sure we all know that we're not the only ones who have ever had this kind of pressure put on us. Pretty much everyone has to deal with some form of stress and anxiety throughout their lives, some more than others. But we all have to deal with it, and, and I have to tell you, I have found no greater source of comfort and peace than in the many promises of Scripture that come from the Bible. In our last two times here on Facebook Live, we talked about Joshua 1, 6-9, and also Psalm 23, great passages that encourage us through tough times. Today I'd like to share with you Psalm 27. It starts off like this. It's one of my favorite passages. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me in this, I will be confident. You know, fear can sometimes be a personal prison. It can confine us and lock us up until we get to the point that we can no longer move. It's been said many times that education and learning are so extremely important in everyone's life. The reason is because without education, you have ignorance, and ignorance breeds fear. One of the things we are constantly learning is trust and confidence in the Lord. And the more we learn to trust the Lord, the less apt we are to fear. The Lord is our light. He lights up those dark places. He is our salvation. He saves us from the penalty of our sins. And he saves us from the attacks of the enemy. When we make the determination in the Lord that we are not going to let fear control us, then our enemy will stumble and fall. This enables us to gain the upper hand. In, in what we're going through right now, the enemy is using the stress and anxiety that sometimes comes from being isolated and unable to address the financial need we have. But when we seek the Lord for our light and salvation and strength, then we can be confident and not fear. The Lord is our stronghold, a fortress, a place of safety. What have we to fear when we're on God's side? Again, verse 3, Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. <laughs> it doesn't get more fantastic or much more fantastic than that. Do you see what I mean? But now notice David's commitment to God in verses 4 and chapter 4. I'm sorry, verses 4 to 6. He says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. I think David's confidence in God grew out of his commitment to God. He had the type of faith that motivated him to be constantly seeking the Lord's will and his favor. The one thing that David desired was to be in the house of the Lord, seeking the Lord, gazing upon the beauty of the Lord, and seeking the Lord in prayer. David says that's one thing he wanted, to seek the Lord in the house of the Lord. For him, that meant being able to go to the tabernacle and worship God there. But let's remember, there was only one tabernacle located in Jerusalem. 
There were many times when David sought the Lord and he gained the peace of God while he was on his own, fleeing from his enemies. How is this possible? It was possible because David knew that wherever he went, God was with him and he could derive the strength of God no matter what difficult situations he faced. The same goes for us folks, especially when we're surrendered our lives to Jesus and his spirit dwells in us. And notice that here in the dwelling place of the Lord, David would keep or he would be kept safe from trouble as if he had been set upon a high rock. Verse 5. And so God's house becomes a place of asylum from the threats of the enemy. Can each one of us make the statement that David made in verse 4? One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Is this your heart's desire? If it is, and you do, you will gradually begin to see that this world doesn't really have much to offer and that the things that had you bound will no longer have control over you. And you will offer sacrifices of joy, or as one translation puts it, shouts of joy in this tabernacle. Look at David's prayer in verses 7 to 12. He says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Lord, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Notice that in verse 8, David knew that God wanted David to seek him. And so David, from his heart, sought the Lord. David responds, your face, Lord, I will seek. Hey, may this be the attitude of our hearts all the time. Always ready to seek the Lord and actually doing it every day. Not just in the hard times but in the good times too. When we do, God will take care of us. But when we don't, we have no such guarantees. Finally, David makes a proclamation in verse 13. He says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In other words, this problem is not forever. Folks, God is not going to let this last forever. What was David's faith built upon? Hey, not upon some abstract ideas about God, but the goodness of God that is seen in the here and now, in the lives of men and women. Where will we see the goodness of the Lord? David says, in the land of the living. Hey, that's right here in this life. It's not just pie in the sky by and by when you die. It's hope for this life. Things you aren't always, uh, they're just not going to be this tough. You say, well, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't got it yet. So what's taking so long? I don't know, but God does. Remember, he is working out his perfect plan. And as long as we stay surrendered to it, his goodness is coming. And so David ends with this great exhortation in verse 14. He says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. As a child of God, We need not fear what may come upon our life. God is in control. The thing he asks us to do is wait upon him in faith, and he will see us through these times. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. For those outside of Christ, there probably is great fear, or at least there should be. But as a child of God, like the t-shirts say, no fear. Oliver Cromwell, the English general, of the 1600s was asked why he didn't fear anyone and his reply was this he said I have learned that if you fear God you have no one else to fear may that be the case with us folks in these difficult times in which we live now 
One other thing, if you are local here in the Cleolum area and you either attend our church or you don't have one to attend or you live outside the area, I would encourage you to tune in to our live stream on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Easter service. In addition to the music and the message, we're going to be celebrating communion. So I would say get your elements ready, some grape juice and crackers or tortillas, and plan on joining us to celebrate communion in your home with your family with us online. At around 9.55 a.m., go to our website at calvarychapelcleelum.com. That's Cleelum, C-L-E-E-L-U-M. Click on the I Want to Learn button, and in the drop-down menu, click on Watch Live. Hey, don't use the Microsoft Edge browser either unless you have the new version, which has been released in its beta form. Just about any other browser should work. I hope you'll join us as we celebrate our Lord's resurrection together. God bless you and your family, and we hope to see you soon.